If you're watching this video, you have probably tried tracking your calories and haven't been able to see a change in the scale. And so by the end of this video, you're gonna know exactly why that's happening. So let's get into it. So I get it, right? Tracking your macros, counting your calories, taking the time to do that, taking to track all the numbers can be frustrating. And so when you don't see that change in the scale, that can be even more frustrating. So what's the big deal, right? Why you're doing everything right, you're tracking your calories, but you're not losing weight. Why? So odds are in the situation that you're in, there's either two reasons why that's happening. And so number one, either you are not being patient enough, you are not giving the scale enough time to change, or number two, which is probably more likely, is you're actually not in a calorie deficit. Now, I know that's confusing and frustrating, especially if you've taken the time to actually log the numbers, but in this video, we're really gonna dive into why that is the way it is. So before we get into that one, let's just get the first one out of the way. Weight loss takes time, and there are so many different factors to what that number is on the scale. So if you lost two pounds every single week for the first few weeks that you were losing weight, and then finally, you keep doing the same things, you think you're in a calorie deficit and you hit a plateau, it can be frustrating, but you're also not giving it enough time. It is completely natural for a scale to go up and to go down while you're losing weight. It's never gonna be a straight line to the bottom. It's always gonna be just a change in numbers from up, down, up, down, up, down. And consistently over time, that pattern should be going down. Now, if you're drinking, let's say, an extra glass of water at night and then you're stepping on the scale, that could result in the change in the number. Right? So that number is not necessarily the bottom line here. But what I do need you to know is that if you're getting stressed, you're stepping on the scale and you're not seeing the results that you want, and it's only been a week or a day even, just give it some time right? Invest your energy into the process. Know that if you do this right, you're going to see results. So more of the story, if you're coming on here and watching this video because you weighed yourself yesterday and then you weighed yourself this morning and the number did not reflect a drop in weight, just give it some more time. So with that one out of the way, let's talk about the second one, right? You think you're in a calorie deficit. You think you're counting all your numbers, right? You're tracking them using an online calorie calculator, or maybe you're working with a coach and you're not seeing the results that you want. So first things first, if this is what you're going through right now, my guess is it's because you're not taking a holistic approach to health. And I'm gonna explain what I mean in a second, but I need you to understand that health is much more than just calories in, calories out. Yes, scientifically, if you are actually absorbing less calories than you burn, you are going to lose weight. But that can be a little bit more difficult to track because health is such a big picture. So if you're tracking your calories and you're not losing weight, you are probably experiencing one of two things or both, right? One being you're either inaccurately tracking the calories that you're consuming, which in a second I'll tell you it's not your fault, or you're just not having the right number for calories out. Calories out is a constantly changing number and we're gonna get into it again we're diving into the research, we're diving into the facts, but I need you to understand that this isn't just a straightforward approach where you are gonna be logging all your numbers and you know exactly how many calories that you're burning and then you're gonna put those two numbers together and hope you're in a calorie deficit, right? This is a lot more difficult to track, it's a lot more fluid than most people think. So what we're about to dive into with the science can be a little bit complex, so I need you to understand that if you are currently tracking calories and you are having a difficult time losing weight, check out the link in the description of this video for our free three-part course on how to use something I call EMS Body Mastery to lose weight. It doesn't require counting calories. It's all about how can we take a more holistic approach to health and how can we tap into that more natural part of health, right? The more holistic part of health in order to help us lose weight in a way that's not stressful or that's not confusing or overwhelming, but is straightforward and to the point. So check that out, but otherwise, let's start diving into this stuff. So let's start with that first one, right? Inaccurately tracking calories in. Now, the fact is, even if everything you eat has a label and you're able to specifically add up and you measure out and you get everything perfect, the calories that you're consuming can still be inaccurate, and I'm gonna tell you why. So maybe you've noticed, but your body's a little bit more complex than people tend to think. Right? There are so many different systems, there are so many different things going on, and they're all working together in order to make sure that your brain and your body is still operating. So first scenario, right? let's just get this out of the way. You go out to a restaurant, the menu doesn't have any calories on it, 
you're trying to count in your head, okay, there's this piece of chicken breast, there's this amount of cheese on there, there's this amount of sauce on there, you're probably gonna be a little inaccurate, right? But let's say even if you were completely spot on. So the truth is that everybody's body has a different amount of calories that they are able to actually use when they consume food, right? If you consume something that's 200 calories, you're not necessarily getting all those 200 calories. So there's a study at the US Department of Agriculture that found that when the average person eats almonds, they receive just 129 calories per serving rather than the 170 calories reported on the label. And of course, if you're consuming less than you actually think you are, that should also lead to you being in a calorie deficit. But the point I'm trying to make here is that everyone's body is different. And especially when it comes to certain foods, there are actually different amounts that are digested. And again, we're not seeing the big picture here. Just another example, there's different calories that your body absorbs, whether you cook food or you eat it raw, right? We've all seen, you can take a pile of spinach that's a mountain high, cook it, and you can put it into a little ball, right? It, it compresses. But the amount of calories that your body can actually use from that spinach is gonna be different based on how it's cooked. Now, along with that aspect, along with how much your body can absorb, the health of your gut also impacts how many calories you can absorb, right? And the health of someone's gut is consistently changing. So there's a study published in the Journal of Cell that found that the presence of a specific type of gut bacteria in mice actually block their intestines from absorbing as many calories from the food that they ate. And studies have also shown that there are specific types of gut bacteria that are more present in people with insulin resistance or diabetes or even who are obese. Now, gut health is a whole video of its own, so if you're looking for more of that, make sure to hit that subscribe button and tap that bell. But just understand that we have this incredibly diverse ecosystem in our body that really does depend how many nutrients we're able to pull from food. And so if we're consuming, let's say 500 calories from something and even if we're only absorbing 400 but we're not able to absorb the nutrients we need our body is still designed to go out and to crave more foods to make sure that we're getting those nutrients and so in a situation where 100 years ago certain foods had the right nutrients that we needed our gut bacteria was in a way that we could absorb those nutrients absorb those calories we may not have been as hungry or needed as much to eat, whereas nowadays we're not getting those nutritional needs met. So we're basically required to eat more to get the same amount of nutrition from certain foods. And I'm gonna be honest guys, so I'm filming right now, so I don't actually have access to the uh, source, but I will leave a link in this video, but companies are actually able to undervalue the amount of calories they have in their food, right? So that's another big thing, is that you may be thinking that you're only eating 150 calories because that's what's on the label, but companies Companies are drastically undervaluing that and they're getting you know 150 200 300 calories you may think that you're eating something and getting 150 calories because it's on the label but maybe actually it's 175 calories right which 25 calories maybe not that much but in the big picture if those miscalculations start to add up that can add more to gaining more calories and having more calories throughout the day. So I just threw a lot at you. That's kind of the picture when it comes to calories in. Uh, it can be very, very difficult to accurately track those calories. But I think what's more interesting is when it comes to calories out. Now, calories out is something that is consistently changing in our bodies. Calories out is affected by things like stress, by sleep quality, by the nutrition we have, by the exercise we're doing. And so to try to track our calories, whether it's based on a treadmill machine or even just a smartwatch or even just doing an online calorie calculator and seeing how much you're tracking throughout the day is not going to be as accurate as a lot of us hope. Now there was a study done at Pomona College and it was published in the Journal of Food and Nutrition Research and they found that when people ate processed foods, so they took one group of people, they fed them whole nutritious foods, they took another group of people and fed them processed foods. Both meals and both foods had the same amount of calories, same amount of macros, What's the difference in calories that they burn? They found that the people who are eating processed foods burn only half the amount of calories as the people who did it, right? So we're taking all this effort to count the calories that we're consuming, but we're totally forgetting that if we're eating a more processed-based diet, our metabolism is gonna drastically slow down and we're not gonna be able to burn as many calories. So if you have a bad night of sleep, your metabolism is gonna slow down. If you're sick or stressed, your metabolism is gonna slow down. If you're not exercising a lot or you're not even getting the right types of exercise for those beneficial hormone changes, your metabolism is not gonna go as fast. So again, if we're just looking at, okay, this is how many calories I need to consume, this is an average of how many calories I'm gonna burn, we could be missing the mark in a massive, massive way. 
So now that we're nice and confused, I wanna make sure that you guys don't leave this video without some sort of option, right? Because it can be so overwhelming if you spent months or even years of your life counting calories and you're now figuring out why you haven't achieved the health that you want, why you haven't achieved the weight that you want. So as far as strategies to overcome this and to approach things without counting calories, you know, I have never counted calories. When we work with our clients, we do not recommend counting calories unless they are the person who loves doing that and who needs to be reassured that they're not eating too many calories. But the first recommendation I would have is again, go down in the description and check out that three part course because that's going to give you a bigger picture of how weight loss works, right? How you can use a holistic approach without having to track every single number. But as far as other strategies I would use, start consuming less processed foods and start going for more natural foods, right? There's a big difference from going to the grocery store and getting a cookie that has all these preservatives in it versus getting a cookie that's been home baked or even cooked that's organic and focused with just the basics of flour, sugar, eggs, milk, all the stuff that usually goes into a cookie. So you don't necessarily have to cut out your favorite foods, you just upgrade them, right? That's something that we teach in that three part course. Second make sure you are prioritizing stress management and sleep. There are so many aspects that go into weight loss. And if you're stressing out about counting calories, you're basically shooting yourself in the foot, right? Because you're doing something that's actually slowing your metabolism. That's preventing you from absorbing more of those helpful nutrients. But besides that, right? If you're cutting your sleep short, if you're only getting five, six hours every single night, and you're not seeing the results you want, even just changing your habits, so you don't have to sleep more, but you can sleep deeper and get more of that beneficial recovery. Which again, we teach in that course, so check it out in the description. And then three, and this one is gonna sound a little weird, but if you're already exercising, so obviously exercise more if you're not, but if you already are, do more manly exercises. Now what I mean by that is do the things that make you feel more tough. So the heavier weights, obviously while still controlling it with good form, the kettlebell swings, the things that allow your body to produce these beneficial hormones that improve your metabolism, right? There's a point like when we feel manly, our body actually starts producing more testosterone and human growth hormone, which is helpful with metabolism and with weight loss. So those are the three strategies to improve. Do me a favor and leave me a comment below. Are you currently counting calories? And if so, how has it worked for you so far? But besides that, if you're looking for more ways to improve your health, make sure to tap that subscribe button. Make sure to check out that three-part course. And of course, keep tuning in for more awesome videos on how to simplify the process of weight loss. So I appreciate you a ton. And as always, make sure to eat smart, sleep deep, move more, and be grateful for this moment. I'll see you next time.